There are uh, five more artist talks scheduled. My name is Carol. I'm the director here at the Carving Studio. Um, after uh, Ray's uh, talk, we'll have one on February 24th with Whitney Ramage and March 24th with Eric Laxman, April 21st with Kerry Ferlani, and we'll be posting reminders about that. So if you are interested, we'll be sending out the links after this talk. Uh, Ray Chimney has taught workshops at the Carving Studio since 2018. Uh, this summer, he is planning to teach two classes, one called Metal Sculpture and Technique Immersion, it's a two day workshop at the, um, in the first weekend of August. And the second one is language of metal sculpture. And that will be at the last week in July from July 25th to the 29th. Um, Ray is a metal artist and the owner and founder of Artisan Iron. From his workshop studio in Groton, he has been crafting exquisite custom architectural landscape and sculptural metal, metal works for more than 20 years. In, in addition to... In addition to his inventory of projects gracing fortunate homes and businesses, Ray has also produced commissioned public art. He is represented by the Three Stones Gallery in West Concord, Mass. And I would like to, to <laughs> turn it over to you, Ray. All right, well, I, I just really wanna um, um, thank you for doing this. And um, it's uh, Carving Studio is uh, super, it's a happy place for me. And um, so thank you. So mm -hmm. I'll just, um, so we can start going and I'll just uh, give a little uh, background here. I mean, can you play? Uh, oops, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Okay. okay, so um, so what I do for my vocation is um, architectural metalwork. Um, a lot of it is um, very uh, like technical to execute. Um, a lot of traditional uh, forging, and um, but then I like something like this where it has a it has a formality to it. I I would put in some um, a, a, like a sense of. A, a whimsy that goes on that um, just makes it come alive. So this is my uh, trademark and the work I do. Okay, next. And some of these things are like very um, difficult to execute. This is a, um, it's actually a bridge. It's a, someone in Beacon Hill wanted a, um, an arbor in their, uh, little postage stamp garden on Beacon Hill. And uh, so this was like building a ship in a bottle, basically, um, bringing it through a little um, uh, portal, getting an, and you go to the next one too. Oh, anyway, so that was, it, so then it goes from like this very uh, tight stuff. And then it's like, okay, let's, uh, let's do something a little different. And um, this is a, um, it's it called a, polytrophic fence. It's, it's super free form. It's all forged. Um, somebody saw another one of these I did in a magazine and they, um, they wanted their own. Um, if, if you go to the next slide. Wait, why don't you, okay. So um, what I would do on, I would do that work on during the week and on weekends I would go in my shop and I would, um, uh, I wanted to play around, just just do work for myself that um, that I liked, that I didn't have to care if anyone else liked, um, and just try things and um, maybe <coughs> fail and, and and maybe um, you know make something that I liked. Um, so this is a, and I would go to the scrapyard and just pick up things that interested me. Um, this this is a, like an abandoned um, fire uh, fire pit, not abandoned. It was worn out. It was in the, in the junkyard. So uh, next please. So then, um, this is taking the uh, the fire pit, and then uh, cutting it up and making it into. I mean, my like the philosophy is that um, 
people would maybe gather around this fire pit. They would enjoy themselves. They'd be with friends and family. Then the thing would get worn out and it would be thrown on a, um, a scrap heap. And then it's done. But then maybe, you know, we have souls and maybe uh, some of these objects do too. And maybe, or maybe they get their souls from us. So this is um, uh, a piece. And um, I just, I, it's, a, it's a, 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 some type of shield, I, I call it. Uh, and if anyone has any questions, I guess, I don't know if now's the time, but, or later, but okay, next please. Um, so a lot of the pieces are made from, uh, like this is, I think it was maybe a side of a, maybe like a file cabinet, just a, a big piece of um, blue steel. And then what was, what really attracted me was the color. It's hard to find uh, color in the, um, at the scrapyard. Most of everything is, it's, um, you know, rusted out. And sometimes, you know, I guess people really like that, but the color is, is a thing for me. And um, one of the issues with working this way is you find this really lovely piece of scrap and um, you get one shot at it. You, um, so something that I would do is I would um, cut, I would take a piece of um, a tar paper and I would play, and I, I would make that into the basic shape of the original piece. And I would just start playing with that so that um, when I did the real, the real thing, I could um, at least be um, making something that I, I, I liked and, and felt good about. This is called a, a vulnerability shield. Next. How are you cutting the thin metal pieces? So oh, okay, so some pieces I'll use, that particular one was cut with a, um, a plasma cutter. Um, some piece, I have a, um, a, a little nibbler, which is, um, if you know what that is, it's, a, it's such a great tool. Um, a lot of, normally I'm um, like roofers, metal people that do metal roofing will use this thing. It's not expensive. And it cuts like crazy. It's fantastic. And um, the only thing you have to watch out for, it's like the, it creates these tiny little uh, bits of shrapnel. So if you have a, a pet or in your shop or studio, it's, it's pokey and it, it gets in everything. So that's one of the drawbacks. But the way it, the way it goes is fantastic. And I, I, there might be some other pieces in here that I created that way. Uh, you can go on, please. Um, so this is a this is a uh, architectural piece. It's a super flowy um, beach railing. Goes down a beach like I mean, it's super simple looking and like super difficult to do. Um, <laughs> it's on the beach. It's hard to weld down there. It has to be put together. Um, you know, there's all these random boulders. Um, I just. Uh, it turned out that this, I make a lot of these things these days. That's sort of, I have a project in here now I'm doing a, I don't know, it's probably 200 feet of bronze railing. Um, anyways, uh, next please. So this is a, uh, Carol, are these, are these all in the right order? Are we doing these in the correct order? Not quite. The numbers? I believe so. Um... All right. I think matter. so. Okay. Um, so this is another view of this, um, that polytropic uh, 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 fence. And, um, um, and I think you can go to the next, next one. There might be some detail. Yeah, I think these are kind of out of order somehow, Carol. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, let me just see if I can go back yeah, one, to two. Oops, sorry. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, just... so. Well, can I ask you another question? Yes, of course. Um, if you're using a plasma cutter on those pieces of metal with paint on them, one, well, two questions. Um, 
what about fumes, but also how do you keep the paint from changing color and getting burned or are you then touching it up afterwards? Um, yeah, you don't, you, the, um, Carol, can you go back to that other view of everybody? Sure. Yeah, so um, right here, this is a, uh, a fume extractor that I use. Um, I'll also, uh, if there's any uh, real fumes that are um, involved, I'll try to do the work outside. Um, and I, I, if there's, you know, artifacts from the making process, that's fine with me. And the, um, the edge, it actually adds to it. It gives a little bit of uh, um, definition to the edges, the little bird parts. It's not like I'm trying to keep it all perfect. Um, that's part of the, the beauty and surprise of it. Uh, yeah, but the fume, no, the fumes, it's, I'm like super careful about it. I really, I suck this stuff out. I'm super careful. Any kind of grinding I do, I do um, outside the shop. I have a table outside and I wear uh, respirators and the whole, the whole, the whole thing. Um, but yeah, it's a concern. So Carol, did we do anything? Are we? Um, let me just see. I'm not sure what I'm, what I'm doing, but they were in order. I apologize. No. Um, so let me just see if I can um, go back. Well, here, let's, what's the next one there? Okay, this, we'll do, let's do this. Okay, you can go back one. Okay, so, um, no, yes. So these are um, uh, barrels that used to contain something and, and with the colors on, on these are really fantastic. Um, what happens when you, you work it and then I'll um, uh, lacquer them and, and, and everything pops. But so this is a start. So the, what I'll do is I'll take these pieces that I like, I like the colors together. I like the, uh, maybe there's markings. Sometimes there's uh, some writing, I guess it's Chinese or something that's, that's on there, whatever. And um, the, the way I'll work is I'll take these pieces and I'll start cutting them up. Um, in, into shapes I like. I feel like each, I'll make each little shape is like a, a, a vocabulary in the piece that, um, That's smart. Then, that I then start to, uh, I'll put together and play with. So in this case, um, again, I don't have a lot of these. That, that yellow is really special. Um, so I don't, I don't want to, um, you know, destroy it in, 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 the, in the making process and regret making the cut. So uh, you can go to the next one, please. So in this case, um, I, this is a, uh, um, like a maquette made with um, tar paper. And I'm playing with this and I'm, you know, I'm goofing around with it and, and I'm cutting these pieces and trying to weave them together and hope, hoping that the metal will um, move the way I, <laughs> that will move the way I'm manipulating the tar paper. Um, and you can go to the next one. So this is then, um, you know, I took a picture, I was goofing around on my, uh, some I, iPad app, I gave, I was, you know, throwing in the random, the approximation of the colors that were in the, um, um, in the original pieces that I cut up. And, you know, so I, I like where this was going. And you can go to the next one. And what size the, are these, Ray? This is about five feet wide. Hmm. Um, and so this was a, a commission for library. Um, and I, there's some really, you know, you can see in the, like the bottom left, there's like some writing in there. There's um, little bits from the tags and you can see how the color just really, um, it got so delicious. With the, with the lacquer, you know, just I hosed it off and um, and the lacquer um, and these things have been they're they're old enough that um, whatever like cr 
crazy chemistry that might have been in here is uh, is not there any longer. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you can go. And there it is in the. Oh, there it is. Yeah. It's. Just, I was hoping. I, I I need them to put a little better light on it. It needs a little spot on it. And there's the mask that will date this photograph. Reference it to this time. Okay, next girl. Um, so this is a piece I made, and I this was actually made from a a, a sled. What was it called? It was a, the snow. It's made from a sled, and I just took the sled and I just sliced it up, and I. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll do work on, on the floor with these things and I, um, so I can get a little distance from it to see what's going on. This is about maybe four feet wide. Um, it's made out, it's called a, oh, what's this? I used to play, I had one as a kid. A snow something or other. Um, next please. Um, so this piece here is made of, uh, uh, again, it's a barrel. Um, it's actually just made from the lid of a barrel in the sort of center uh, right. You can see the, the bung hole from where they would fill this, fill this thing up. Um, the color, you know, it's love the color and it's, it's, it's um, the shadows are what I really, I really like about it. Um, and the bits, so you see those curly cues, those are done with a, um, another type of um, cutting, a uh, hand cutting tool um, that gives you these um, curly cue pieces. Right, how do you finish these? Are they polished and then is there a finish put on? I'll just clean it and lacquer them. Cleaning and just, you know, uh, rattle can, rattle can lacquer. Just, um, you know, a few coats of that and it, and it, and it just makes it, uh, it makes it pretty, you know? Okay, next. Um, so these are some, again, this is like a piece. It was a, like a very nice piece of old like machinery cover. You can see in the bottom right, there's the uh, um, see, uh, the folds where I, I flattened out the folds. And um, I just went ahead and cut this on a, um, this was cut up on a, um, a Beverly shear which is something I bring to the workshops. And it's a super handy uh, tool. It's kind of like a giant uh, tin snips. That's what it acts like. And you can cut some really big material with these things and curve them. And um, you can pick them up like Harbor Freight or something for, for not a lot of money. And this is kind of nice. You can see in the middle top, there's like some green and stuff. And there's sometimes these things pick up um, uh, from just being outside of like algae or I don't know lichens or something and um, yeah this one's called um, focus now okay next uh, okay this one this one's called barrel grass and this was like one of the first uh, pieces that I made doing this that I really uh, I felt I was on to something um, you can see the um, that folds those um, lines of folding where you'll see in the middle of a you know 55 gallon drum um, there's some lettering that says something probably like a dioxin or something I don't know um, but and this is again so I'm using little you can see um, in the like the left area you'll see the tiny little welds I'll do again I I try to do as little you know, heating up as I can because I don't want to make all the, uh, the the smoke, and um, and I definitely do um, ventilate when I do this. Ray, the, the 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 metal is beautiful, but in addition, the the shadows are gorgeous. You the organize shadows. you organize the lighting. You, the lighting this, for the place. This, the, the gallerist did the lighting. It just it just takes these things take lighting so well because they. They're sitting off the wall, maybe you know, three or four inches in places. Um, and one of the, they're a little difficult to um, uh, hang. That's one of the issues. You know, I just got to figure out how these, how they hang, and put little 
clips and whatnot back there. Um, yeah. And there, the other thing is you can see like in the upper right area the where it gets a little pokey, they're, they're, they're somewhat um, uh, dangerous. And I don't know, I just kind of like that. I just like, you know, it's not the, I just like it. It's, you know, you just have to live with it. Um, uh, next girl. Oops. Doesn't seem to be advancing. Yeah. Let's enjoy this one a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So this one here. So uh, when uh, I was approached by somebody who wanted me to make, um, he was, uh, a fashion uh, person and he had a line of belts and he wanted me to make buckles out of this piece and he brought it over and it's, it's from a 57 Chevy, you know? So um, then, you know, I made a few buckles and then I ended up with, you know, extra 57 Chevy. So this one's called 57 Chevy. And um, I don't know, it's kind of like sharky and it's, it's like, it's so beautiful how it's, um, you know, the paint is gone, the paint is there. Um, and um, I don't know, it's kind of like it. Uh, next please. So, oh, this, so this one is a cute little thing. This again, it's a piece of um, some kind of um, sheet that was probably covering some kind of piece of equipment. And um, I just started cutting this thing up and I was cutting it. And then I started welding it together, welding it together. And it was nice. But then when I flipped it over, it was freaking awesome, <laughs> which is, I'll take that. Um, and then it's like, it became this beautiful um, uh, vessel. And then I just, you know, leaving some of the pieces go um, a bunch of you know tiny little wells. Um, I don't I don't try to hide the wells. I think they're you know they're part of the piece. Um, I don't try to grind things down. Um, and again, the shadows on this thing were super great. This this one's about um, maybe two feet tall overall. Uh, next, Carol. Here's another one that got all. Um, cut up and again I use the um, um, tar paper to you know see where I was going and if you, you can see up in the uh, upper middle there's I was using um, uh, self-drilling screws to uh, hold it together um, in, in places Which, and, and I'll take these screws and I will um, soak them in some like mild um, acid or I forget the process, um, but it, it will like uh, age them. It'll age the uh, screw so they look the age of the, of the metal. And again, there's some beautiful colors in here, that blue green and the greens going on there. I just, I just really love that. And next girl. Okay, so, so then um, somehow I got into using um, um, old roofing. And I went down to Rhode Island. I found a place on a, a Craigslist and they had like a, a ton of old metal roofing. So I, I drove down, I took all, all they had. And, um, and this was um, a piece that um, I just was slicing up the roofing and some of it is the top front side and some of it is the back side of it. And there's, it, this is put together with um, little um, self-drilling screws. There's a uh, structure in the back. Oh, there's a wooden um, substructure that, um, that everything is screwed onto. Um, so it's, and this is maybe uh, two and a half feet tall. Uh, next, Carol. This is um, something I was doing with um, Teresa. This is part of our uh, daily challenge. We did a daily challenge and this was just a little um, a trifle, if you will, of just cutting up some little rusty thing on the, uh, the Beverly Shear. And a lot of the curly cues just happen. And 
you know, you tweak them a little bit. And what I like is it's, there's a tiny little um, heavy piece of uh, steel that everything just sort of balances there. And it's, I don't know, it's just kind of, it's kind of cute. Um, all right, next please. This one has, um, this was done at um, uh, North Country, I, when I was at North Country Studio Workshops. And it's made of, it's called a totem. And um, it's made again of the roofing strips, little strips of roofing. And there was a, a um, workshop going on next to uh, us that was using uh, horse hair to make brushes. So I got a bunch of horse hair on there and paper and it just, this thing came together. And this is, um, I, I think it's like four, four and a half feet tall. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's, um, I, th I think it worked pretty well. All right, next please. Okay, this was um, something I did at a, um, a residency and I was cutting up some roofing and cutting up some barrels. And you can see the, uh, in the lower left, there's some paper tags from the barrels. And this was one of these things where I just had them on the floor and I'm like kicking it around, kicking it around, kicking it around. And, you know, it's things it just doesn't do it. And then somehow, you start make, you know, committing to um, some part of it and then, you know, building up. And um, it was, I don't know, it was very frustrating for a while, but it, 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 it came together. It's, it's got the shadows. Um, it has the, uh, I like the, 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 the two tones going on. And um, um, there it is. Um, Next, Carol. Uh, okay, so this is um, um, this is a uh, mo uh, a monument, or well, it, it's uh, it was the, the top piece is part of the World Trade Center, and um, you can go to the next one, Carol. Next, oh, uh, go back. I'm sorry, I thought there was another show. So this was at a, a fire at a fire station where there. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, no, oh, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, no, no, I know. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not sure why this is. And one more back, one more back, and back, back. Yeah, back. it just doesn't seem okay, to. Okay, never mind. I'm go sorry. Back one more. Okay, there you go. So this is at a fire station. It's a 9-11 memorial uh, piece. And what was, um, it was, an honor to be working on this. Um, and I had people come by, there was this, uh, this fellow came by who had like a bunch of, he, he was like this big, big hard man and he's got all weepy. And he had like friends who died in the, you know, 9-11 uh, thing. And um, I don't know, it was just uh, pretty, it was, a, it was a great piece to, to work on in the, you know, the engineering of it, you know, it's this heavy, heavy thing. It's about, it's about like 10 feet tall off there. Um, and it hasn't fallen over yet. So it is crossed. Okay, now Carol, there we go. So this was over at um, uh, the Shaker Village up in um, Canterbury. And these, this again, this, this is this, um, um, metal roofing, old metal roofing. And um, it just, you know, one of these things, it's, it just came together. It, I made it. And if you go to the next uh, one, the uh, video, if you play that with sound, this is a view from the other side. Um, it would just sort of like move in like a little breeze. And this is called the graces. Um, and it makes this beautiful or sort of beautiful little clanking sounds as it, you know, wafts the breeze goes through it. And you can go to the next one, Carol. You can go to the next. Um. So then 
I, I put it at um, Castle Hill. There was an exhibit there. I brought it to Castle Hill over at um, Crane Beach. Um, terrific breezes and, you know, really um, a great spot to have it. And um, it's like a real lesson in how when you put something out into the world, um, you can go to the next one. It's, you know, anything can happen to it, especially when there's like very heavy breezes and it just got totally destroyed. <laughs> and um, I don't know, it was kind of, I, it was like, it had its run and it was beautiful. And I just kind of, I, I don't know, I felt good about it. It was just like, it was crushed, but it was a great idea. And um, I, um, I was recommended to some people to do a, um, they wanted the sculpture and I, I said, oh, how about the graces? I'll, I'll, make, a, I'll make a new one, a, like a, a, a durable one. Cause this was just like little bits of galvanized roofing, you know, lightly welded to some like half inch steel rod and just stuck in the ground. And um, so then if you go to the next one, Carol. So this is um, another version of it. And this is made with, um, it's like more, um, engineered to like to to last in the open and outdoors and it's so this is made out of stainless um, steel and there's this nice so uh, there's like patinas you can use with stainless so it's not all shiny and it actually looks like sort of a rusted or aged look that you know everyone seems to like including myself and there's if you go to the next one Carol and there's another little video And this one works and it's taller. It's like, uh, it just does its little thing. Um, that's the graces again. You can go to the next one. Okay. Yeah, let's This is over in, in Harvard, Harvard Mass. You can actually see it from the road. It's in the uh, Shaker Village there. Um, so this is um, taking some just old sheet steel, cutting it up, putting it together. It's almost like a sort of like a, like a, a pod looking thing. Um, this is maybe three feet tall two to three feet tall. Oh, and the other, so that is also, I'll take the flat steel and um, cut it up. And then I have some, I have a hammer. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little shop tour after this. And I have a, a, a pneumatic power hammer that I, I use to um, shape and reshape the, uh, the flat uh, material. Um, one thing, I, you know, sometimes we, you know, we have to give ourselves um, uh, rules to work by, I think, I do, um, in parameters. And one of the things that I don't do, and, it, and it's something I, when I teach is I really discourage people from doing, is to just take things and just slap them together. I, it's, I, I insist that they have to do something to it before they put it together. You can't just go, oh, oh, here's two eyes. Oh, it's a frog. Oh, look, I'm done. Like, no, no, can't do that. You have to take it. And so this is taking the steel and messing with it and goofing around with it and changing it. You know, and then we can talk about putting it together into, into something. And what's nice is just really, it um, sets off, off of the wall, almost like a, you know, an unplanned view. It's a, a, it's a, it's a hemisphere. Next, Carol. Okay, so this is a this is something that just um, I had some pieces laying around the shop. I had some pieces of hoop that were from something, and um, so one thing I really like the thing about when you put it out into the world, it becomes it becomes part of the world, and whether it lasts or breaks, or if someone wants to do something with it, that's that's really wonderful. And uh, this is a piece that has, it's very, um, it's 
balanced. And the idea is that the, um, the new owner can go out and um, goof around with it. You can change the view. It's not like it's you're sitting on your deck and it's not always the same view. And it's like, oh, what have we here? Let's change this around. So you can go to the next one, Carol. Oh, look at that. It's a new sculpture. Oh my gosh. Um, and um, you can go to the next one. Oh, oh look at that. It's, it's fresh. What day is today? Oh my gosh. Um, a tr one of the things was, you know, you have this great idea, you start putting it, get, putting it together and the thing keeps falling off. Or, and, and so there's the, uh, you know, little engineering problem solving, which worked out. And you can see at the, uh, these weights down at the bottom here, just because I have this, I have this shop and I have all kinds of steel laying around in here. So that is like three inch bar and it's super heavy. And I have like a few of these and I cut them up for bases or weights and like kind of like a salami. Um, okay, next. And there's uh, the nature doing its thing and showing another, another view, which is, uh, I just, you know, I love when someone who has some new work sends me a picture of they, and, and people will do this sometimes in the snow. It's like, it's, it makes me feel so good. Uh, next. Okay, next. Oh, I never tire of this. Um, and it's, isn't that great? It's so great how the, uh, uh, the, the snow just um, changes uh, the line of it. It's like, you know, it's like a, a French curve kind of thing, just adding and adding. It's, it's crazy. Uh, next. All right, enough, enough of this one. <laughs> okay, so this is back to um, the, uh, the, the work. This is something I worked on uh, this summer. And it's something I always wanted to do. Um, someone had a dog and they needed to keep their dog inside the fence, but they, you know, who wants to have a fence in their yard just for the dog? But and I said, hey, how about, and there's this gorgeous view here at this, this spot in, in Concord. And, and I just always wanted to make a fence out of grass. So this was a case of like making a, a lot of pieces of grass. So of course, then I had to keep a little tiny dog from running out. So every time I thought I had enough of these pieces, I did it hit four times. I had to keep making more of this stuff. Um, but if you go to the next one, Carol. Oh, look at it, there it is. And so the, this is just in, you know, after it's installed, the base is gonna go away. Um, and this one, it also happens to have a, uh, there's a gate in it that um, it's like a five foot gate that swings out so that they're uh, like the, the landscaping people can get in there and, and mow. And um, I, I can't wait to see it when it, um, yes, exactly. A lot of work, <laughs> totally. <laughs> it was, it was too much work and engineering. The engineering part was, um, was nuts. But, you know, part of this, doing this kind of work, I, it's like, I feel, uh, uh, a certain like uh, immortality. Uh, this is going to be there. It's going to be, you know, pieces will be out there. Um, I came from a background of doing uh, graphic arts where you, you're you so stressed out trying to get some work done. And, you, you know, you're working all night, working all weekend. The thing would go to, you know, print when people did that, go to print. They'd look at it and, and they would toss it right in the trash. You know, and it's just like, you know, soul crushing in a sense but this I, I just feel um i feel good um, next please uh this is a uh so this is the like make this is a shot in the shop of making a uh, fence that um would go to um this was like the first one so this is made for someone in concord um and one of the uh, issues with uh, forging and blacksmithing is there's so much work to get uh, something done. If you have to heat up and 
you know, every little six inches or so and work it heat the next heat. So this was, a, 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 I came up with this way of cold working this, this stuff where the little pointy pieces at the ends would be forged and the rest of it, I could do cold. And it was, so, and you can do this really great forms. Um, just watch it move um, by just pinching one side of the bar and it stretches one side and it just starts moving. And um, um, you can go to the next one, Carol. So this is, a, this is the work installed. And the, what it came from, you'll see in the, there's an overview shot where I was doing a bunch of fence that was um, very um, sort of formal looking, you know, regular, regular, regular. And then the, the uh, owner of, the, of it, who's um, uh, Gregory McGuire, he wrote Wicked. And he came up with this idea of he wanted to see this thing start changing. So um, I made this narrative in this fence where it slowly changed. This was this whole project was maybe, I don't know, five years, six years, maybe bit by bit, um, where the whole fence started just morphing and changing. And then it just went apeshit toward the end. Um, and part of this, like I, I broke the post. I wanted, you know, everything's breaking down. Like the DNA was going the little, there's little flower things, but they're sort of kind of like alive and, you know, maybe nice, maybe not so nice little things flying around in here. Um, go to the next one, Carol. Um, you know, there's the, I just love these uh, uh, graceful lines. I, I, I just love doing that. Um, it's, it's, you know, you get the pleasure of, you know, you feel pleasure when you're making something like that. And, and then there's the physical part of it, of, of the hammering, the power hammer. Um, and you, you, you know, you feel like a dot, a small G, okay. Uh, um, uh, next, please. It's another shot of it. What was, what was a quote of, Kant, of Brancusi? He said, what did he say? Create something like a something, create like a god. That's my compressor. Hold on. Create like a god, command like a king. Here we go. Oh, I'm back. Um, what? Create like a god, command like a king. Yeah, work like a slave. <laughs> oh, that's, that's the last part of it. I like that. Um, anyway, so this is, and this was like a, you know, cantilevered entry. And you can go to the next one, Carol. And that shows, you can see down to the left, the fence goes and goes and it gets a little more regular and and that's that so this was how long like, did it uh, wind up being how, how you mean like linear feet you mean yeah or time wise no 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 how long how how what much di how much distance does it cover uh i'm gonna say 50 60 feet wow yeah, yeah. and there's more on the other side of the house I know Greg and Andy, and I, they're going to have to invite me out to see this in person. Oh, okay. Have you, so have you seen it? No, I haven't been out. I've been to their place in Vermont, but not in Concord. Oh, there you go. You got to go. And you, yeah. no one, this is in the back of the house. You can't see it. Beautiful. Yeah. So, and actually, he sent me some, he sent me some photos of, of it in the snow, of this, this um, archway. Um, uh, next, girl. Okay, so this is the other one that I did, and this was this is what I wanted to show you was the um, it's what's fun as an artist is you can do what you want. That's what I think, or you can you know you're not not impose yourself upon people, but it's they hired you. Okay, let's go, and um, and this guy was um, a very likable person. Um, he had um, he was like a you know a money guy. He owned a vineyard. 
And I put this is at the very end of it where I put like, you know, there's your grapes, but you know, you never, it's, you'll never, it's, you know, it's, you never really have it. And that's the little hand there reaching over. Um, okay. Oh, the other thing is, so I, and you'll see in some of these groups, I try to, I would try to use like traditional joinery and splitting and, you know, the bars going through the bars and that kind of thing, which makes it a little more um, tricky yet um, satisfying. Uh, next, please. Um, so this was a piece I did as a, with a, as a, with, in collaboration with uh, Amanda Whitworth. She's a, a, a dancer up in Vermont. And um, we did a, um, an installation in a couple of places and a, um, a, uh, a, there was a dance event here. And this was in a, a field here in Groton. We set it up. I have a, a, uh, a collector who's got a bunch of these pieces, a bunch of my work. And he um, said, it's, sure, look, we set it up in a field. And this was like the view from the road. And it was just this thing that would turn on and just, and there's these undulating lights that would just go and go. And it was really fun to hear what people um, would say about it. How like, what the heck is that? Oh, it's this, it's, you know, it's ugly, it's beautiful. Um, um, I just, uh, it, was, it was pretty fun. It was it, while, while it lasted over there. And this is again, this is the uh, metal roofing. Next girl, just, I think another, just another shot of it. Um, okay. Next. Uh, so this is my piece after uh, Brancusi. It's a stainless uh, sheet um, and just um, rolled and uh, buffed out. And again, this is like taking the pieces of and cutting them up, you know, making the vocabulary and then just seeing how it uh, comes together. And hopefully, you know, I made enough, uh, enough pieces to finish the work without having to to go back and roll. Um, there's another one, Carol. It's another, you know, I, and I just love how, you know, you can walk around things and change the view and um, have a whole nother um, uh, look. Uh, next, Carol. So this is about as uh, like, like um, figurative as I get. These are, so I live on Fitchbridge Road in Groton and uh, we had an old bridge that was getting chopped up and they were, because it was a, a hazard. And I went down when they were doing that and I asked the uh, bridge guys if I could have some bridge. So they brought me like a grapple load of bridge. And there were these two little creatures that came out of it that I really, I think I welded three pieces together on it. Otherwise it was as is and, um, this one's called um, uh, Where's Mothra? Um, and it reminds me of, I don't know, if, as a kid, I would have a coloring book with the like dinosaurs and stuff. And they'd always show the T-Rex and that cute little dinosaur getting, you know, threatened. And uh, that's what these guys are. Um, I think that's it, Carol, right? Is that it? Yes. Yes, it is. <clears throat> So let me, here we all are. <laughs> oh, hi everyone. Oh my gosh. Um, so one, I can show you around my shop. Is that something people would like? Okay. Yeah. Um, Valerie, how do I how do I get out of that? You don't have to get out of it. Ray, the rest of us can put you into the speaker mode. We'll see you. Well, I, I want I, oh, I want to want to walk. Can you see what I'm seeing? I just want to go backwards. You got to flip the camera, right? Yeah, I want to flip the camera. How about this? We'll do it this way. We'll do it elder style, okay? Okay. So this is, um, you know, I have like a blacksmithing area. I have a very fancy uh, anvil, you can see. Can't get those anymore. 
the cars now. Forges, saws. This is the, uh, the pneumatic hammer that I was telling you about. Um, there's uh, other kind of welders, iron workers. This is like an old, um, uh, it's a fly press it's called. If you ever find one of these, you, can, you should snatch it up because you can do all kinds of fun stuff with it. It's a super low tech and um, high uh, impact. Um, this is my little like 40 something ton uh, iron worker. Does all kinds of handy stuff for me. This is our latest addition which is a uh, super duper 1980s milling machine that we're using. I say we have this great helper now helping me out. Um, my office. And welders. And it's my little office, my little shop desk here. And this is my workbench. This is like the main thing. Oh, and don't forget the, uh, the fume extractor. It's fantastic, lifesaver. That's all I got. <laughs> So Ray, when you um, teach the class at the carving studio, what do your students do? Oh, what do they? They do amazing things. I'm not. I'm not kidding. Um, uh, what do they do? As far as like the nitty gritty of what they do, or what do they? Well, do what they what do? type of tools are they using? I mean, oh, oh yeah, yeah. So what I'll do is um, I bring. Um, uh, you know, we have the welders there that are part of the school. I bring um, a bunch of hammers and some, um, some uh, big uh, blocks for uh, forming uh, material, different hammers. Um, I have this, um, every time I would go there, it's hard to see, but I have this little spot welder, this blue thing, and it would never work. I would call it out there, never worked, but we finally figured it out and, and, and did it. And so I'll bring this spot welder, which is really fun. So you can, um, you can weld without um, sparks essentially, or very small sparks. You know, you don't need the big mat. You can just kind of put two pieces and you just hold them there and you press a you know, foot pedal. Um, um, we do a lot, you know, cutting. Basically, it's cutting things apart and putting them together. Um, but I get super impressed by some of the pieces people make, and I and I, I really uh, I'm like so serious about, you know, it's not the first thing you come up with. I, I get like, you know, I'm not nice about. It. Like, and and there's some really cool work. Really, really, it's amazing the stuff people make. Um, well, Ray, is, is it I okay? Mean, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Is yes. it okay to ask you what inspires your work? It's so playful and wavy and octopus seaweed like, and why is that question yeah. too boring to? <laughs> no, no. It's, um, uh, it's it's like it's sort of like like listening to my body when I'm doing something. You know, when you uh, are working and you you feel like uh you feel something it's if you're not if i'm not feeling it I, i'm just um it's, it doesn't work but if it's if i am it's like I, it's a feeling and i want it's like making um it's like i want things to be beautiful but i also want it to be um it's not i want you to look at it twice you know, if it's just like, oh, it's a flower. I don't want to do a freaking flower. I don't want to, you know, it's got to be like, is that, a, is that a flower? I don't know. 
I just that's part of it. I want it to be interesting. I don't want it to be I don't want it to be boring. I don't want it to be like um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just get weepy thinking about it. I just want I want it to I want it to be um, memorable. No, um, no emojis. <laughs> No, smiley faces. <laughs> unless it's a spiral. <laughs> um, no. And you know, part of it too is, you know, you want to, you, it's, it, it is like taking it to that other, to another step. That's, a, you know, not the first thing, not the second thing, you know, maybe the third, third, the third thing and, um, and being patient. And then there's um, something that's a whole nother story. The little Buddha will, um, uh, it's when you're working and you, you just like relax into things like the little Buddha, you do the little Buddha and you just, maybe you're sawing, maybe you're doing something and you just can focus on it and, um, uh, you know, be within yourself. And I, oh, and I, and I feel like the luckiest person in the world. <laughs> Well, ha um, having taken um, your class, Ray, uh, words I live by are don't make anything with a face. Uh, <laughs> no. no. And uh, it was very inspirational. So uh, I had a, I, I, no, I you, highly recommend it. You did an amazing piece. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. Like a super thing. <laughs> well, it's big. I'll give it yeah, that. You had to hire a truck. Right? <laughs> no, that was pretty fun. It was pretty, and um, I just love um, the, what I love about teaching is just the, uh, um, I don't, it's, it's like the end, sitting back, you know, it's, you know, you don't say anything and then you might say something. And um, I just, I, I love, and I love, it's because I, I, done like as far as technique goes i've done all kinds of things so if someone uh i can help and guide someone to make something that they um maybe not even couldn't imagine that they were able to make ray i always it it took me a while to understand how you almost you respected the materials so some of the cars, the parts, and the color that comes with the aging and the algae and all of that seems to really be kind of a wabi-sabi approach yes, to the wabi-sabi books exactly. yeah. <laughs> to sculpture. And, and I, yeah. I really, uh, I think you capture it, and it, you're also sort of tentative about it because you're waiting for it to to finish and. I, I value that. I really respect that. Yeah, I, I don't want to be the one to destroy this thing that's been sitting there <laughs> wonderfully aging for so long. And then I'm the one that's like, oh, what did, oh you turn it into a, a heron. <laughs> oh, it's another frog. No. <laughs> no. Was there like a, there wasn't like another little, uh, no, never mind. Yeah, I'm going to show you. Maybe, <laughs> perhaps. Here it is. This is how I work. I hope. I hope. <laughs> no, this is boring. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> The other thing I wanted to mention too, because I didn't realize you came out of um, graphic arts, but um, you know there really seems to be a, um, a you know a connection between a very stark contrast between the forms, but then with that, especially the one with the ice art is like a kind of school of fish. You had modeled the. Uh, forms on top of each other and they were really kind of nesting in there and um, you know that seems to me to have the both qualities the two-dimensional and you know really making it three-dimensional that you know 
crossover between graphic arts and, and I was sculpture. I would say a uh, three dimensional artist trapped in a two D world. <laughs> that, that was a, I wasn't that good at it. I was like doing yeah, I was doing like catalog drawings and stuff. I just wasn't that good at it. You know, it was lucrative, but and it was stressful. It was so stressful. Yeah. And, uh, now I'm happy. <laughs> happy, happy ish. Darn. Well, Wait, if, what else? Yeah, are there any other questions? We're we're at eight o'clock, and um, but we have time if anybody has any more inquiries yeah. for my, my program doesn't start till eight thirty, so. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, this I just love, really I love, great. I, I I had no idea what you did before I got on tonight, and I'm really excited about how you do this wall art with the shadows and you know the things the work is really alive thank you thanks well i just love that place i love going up there you know it's like hey ray when when yeah. you work with the um what do you call it tar paper the roofing paper tar paper yeah it, are there pieces and how do you cut it just uh, scissors or you know mat knife or so just yeah. cut it um, I find that, like, I'll, I'll make the piece, and um, here, I, I'll grab it, I'll grab something. <laughs> this is where we should have the interstitial music. <laughs> yeah, here we go. I mean, here's some pieces making um, making a bunch of uh, shapes that I like, and they're um, hammered out. That's paper, or that's metal. No, this is this is uh, this is steel, this mild regular steel sheet. I'll just make these pieces, and I'll just. I mean, my hope is that if I make a bunch of pretty little things, that'll make a pretty big thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't mean pretty like just pretty. I mean it was pretty, I mean, a certain words I don't like is clever. I don't like that. Oh, that's clever. It's like, no, no. This is um, like tar paper. Just playing with little pieces and oh, what's it gonna do? But then the idea is it's not like I'll take it exactly like that and cut it. I think if I did it exact and cut and trace, it would lose its spontaneity and part of being the artist is you want to just mess around with it. You just want to go, okay, here we go. You, you know, the confidence in you're making the cut. I know where I'm going. And this is all, all me and mine. And um, that's, that's how I work. Oh, Anything great. else? Yeah, you can... Really oh, nice Carol. job, Ray. And, and um uh hang in there <laughs> thank you carol looks like you got the motive <laughs> <laughs> it's the speaker that's all right with me <laughs> hey. hey i have a question <laughs> yes uh, this is a young man over here uh, josh, hey, hey. You? good to see you ray you taught um, me some great words josh oh yeah like what <laughs> the moment no <laughs> Um, so I have a question about how, uh, you think that your, uh, artwork, these wall pieces and your more commercial work, the fences, how they are related to each other, how they influence each other. Um, what is that relationship like for you? Okay. The relationship is, um, it's, uh, uh um, I want to say like a repulsion of of having to do something that it's got to save people, it's got to states, it's got to you know, it's got to be the code, it's got to be this, it's got to be done, it's going in their house, they got to like it, or I don't really care. I don't really. Care. It's like a feeling. Finally, uh, a sense of, of freedom and. Um, uh, I don't know. 
it's uh, worth and redemption. I don't know. It's like feeling mm -hmm. I'm doing what I want to do. I, I'm doing mm -hmm. what I want to do. You know, one, um, but the, but, you know how they say if you wanted to play jazz, you should play your classics first, so you get your chops mm -hmm. and everything. And that's mm -hmm. what that's like. It's like okay, I can build a bridge, I can do this, I can do any of that stuff. So I certainly can like, you know, I can play around like stuff like this. And and then the challenge is to make it, you know, to make it something that you're mm -hmm. that's worth making. And out of, because, because you're not making anything, you're just making art. It's not mm -hmm. like you know. No one needs it. You know, you can't eat it or whatever. And so it's got to have some worth to it. Otherwise, it's like, you know, you might as well, you know, make potholders and go to the flea market or something. Mm. Looks like you're in your, in your shop there. Yeah, I'm in my shop here. So I can't call it a studio. It's a shop. If I was a painter, I'd call it a studio. No, it's more serious than this, is right? Or there's yeah, it looks, it looks cold in there. Yeah, it's yeah. a little cold. Yeah. Hey, that's my brother, <laughs> Jeremy. So, hey Ray, um, I love I love watching you and hearing the way you talk and talking about your metal being vocabulary. I mean, you put such a spin on things. It really shows how much you love what you're doing. And I'm so proud of what you're doing. I'm so happy for you. Oh, man. Thanks, Jerry. That's my older brother. But, but if you could define wobbly-sobbly, though. What, no. what, what? Wobbly-sobbly. It's under, the... Here it is. I'm going to Ready? If you call something wobbly-sobbly, it's not wobbly-sobbly anymore. Nice. By identifying as wabi sabi, it's not wabi sabi. Okay. It's it's you can't you just can't you just have to know, and you can't talk about it. But maybe a little bit, maybe you can point. <laughs> That's what I get. It's it's a it's a it's a spirit soul thing. Yeah, and you've got it. You've got it. But there's some great little these. Has anyone read those books? Wabi sabi, a little. It's fantastic, yeah. and the whole thing about the, the tea ceremony and the little caves or little huts. It's it's. I'll tell you about it, Jerry. All right. <laughs> and, a, and, and a weekly phone call. <laughs> All right. hey, it, it's Teresa. I I just want to say, knowing you and seeing this presentation has been wonderful, and I want to say that. When I look at your artwork, like in this whole bulk and format that you showed and all the individualism of it, the words that I come up with that connect all of these pieces are you're wrapping things for comfort, you're connecting things, they're mm. energetic and you're encompassing things. And I almost want to call you the Andy Goldsworthy of metal. So, you can yeah. do that. You can do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind. <laughs> it was a great presentation. It was so nice to see your architectural work that still had your energy. I mean, you put your energy into your architectural work, but also into your spontaneous. Now I'm free. No expectations. I can just be and make whatever. And there it is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Carol, you're back up top. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ray, thank you so much. I really look forward to seeing you this, here at the Carving Studio this summer and um, hope as many of you have a chance to visit while he's there, either in the class or just to, to be part of his energy when he's, when he's at the studio. It's really contagious. And I have a good playlist. And he has an excellent playlist, which I stole while he was there. <laughs> yeah. so, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank yeah, you for, for letting me in your TV sets. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>